I made a video about musical language on stage and how to convey a chord to somebody else who maybe doesn't know the song. You've been asked to play a song at a wedding or function and some of the band know it and others don't. Well, there is a way to get round this. The, now the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, they all sound the same from the other side of the stage. Only F is different, really. Um, there is another way. So I'm gonna divide this demo into two halves, bass and then guitar, because there are a few sort of different things that we need to consider. Let's start with bass. Now, let's say we've got the key of G and somebody tells you what key the thing is in, the tune is in, so it's in G. That should give the bass player a clue as to where the other chords may be or the other notes of the song. Now, G is third fret on bass. Now some bass players would go, oh yeah, G, D, they're looking across C, E, uh, G. There is another way to do this, which it also involves less darting about the neck. Now let's treat the scale as numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of those, those six things, they sound different. They're easier to lip read. If, we, if we're in a major key, start with the middle finger on the key note. In this case, it's G, but it could be anywhere on the fretboard. Now this is important because it's all pattern based. This is how guitarists and bass players work. It's all about patterns and where things are, rather than necessarily how the keyboard is laid out with its black notes and white notes, which is obviously requires a different sort of thought process. That's chord one with the middle finger and it's based on the major scale. There's chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six. There is a chord seven, but it's not used very much and it's mostly going to be the flattened seventh, where the normal natural seventh is that one. So your scale will sound like this, or it'll sound like this. And for rock and pop applications, the flattened seventh, as it's known, it may be called by a guitarist as seven. Be aware that the seventh could be either. Um, but in rock and pop, it's generally going to be the flattened seventh. So if you hear that, take that as red. This means that the guitarist can go, oh yeah, it's one, it's one, four, six, five. One, four, six, five. So you're simply learning the scale in terms of numbers. So it can be much easier. And also, if you've got a guitarist with a capo, that's gonna also be a bit tricky. If the guitarist is capoing at A and shouts out E, which is what they would be playing, it's actually an A chord. That's gonna be even more of a problem. So this is where numbers really come into their own. If the guitarist is going, oh, it's one chord one, you know, chord four or whatever, if they've got a capo on, it doesn't make any difference then because you just have to look where their capo is or they'll say capo at five and then you're, then you're in. So in the key of A, for example, that's chord one, five is the last finger, as it was when it was in G. It's a different note. So in the key of C, chord one, that is that, chord five, six, four. You know, that's a common chord sequence, one, five, six, four. And the guitarist or keyboard player might say the complete sequence and say, ah, oh, the verse is one, you know, one, five, six, four. And then in the midsection, it goes to three. You think, okay, I've got enough information to actually get to grips with that. Now, as a bass player, jumping between one and six is quite a long way. Now we've got to make, got to sort of have the, the knowledge that your scale of one to eight, let's say I'm in C, six can also be below one. One and eight are the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're both C's, but one's higher than the other. So we've got to work out then where six might be that's below your root note. 
So on the bass, or you know, an octave is always two strings and two frets away. So you can get round that sort of the, the six problem by thinking, well, it's just three frets down from the the root, the, the tonic number one. So one, four, five, four, six, for example. It's up to sort of personal preference and taste whether that that sixth is too far away. If it went one and then straight to six, it does make sense to go down from the, the number one to find six. Four, five, one, six, four, five, one, three, two, four and five. So if you can remember where those figures are in terms of your scale, somebody can just be shouting chords like that. That's fine. Now let's look at minor keys. Now with the major scale, we had a middle finger start, which generated our pattern. The minor scale would start on the first finger. That's called the natural minor, and actually in rock and pop terms, it's what you're most likely to encounter. This time, you've got, there's a, it's a bit of a sticky situation can emerge where the guitarist might say, oh, it's one to three. Or they might say one to seven. You've got to make sure that you unthink the distances between all the notes in the major scale because they do change for the minor one. And then you've got to cope with the fact that sometimes the seventh may indeed be a semitone higher than the seven that's shouted at you. Now, there is no such thing in musical terms as the sharpened seventh. It doesn't exist. The seventh is either seventh or it's a flat seven. So we get into slightly murky territory here, but the, the principle is the same. If we're in um, Hotel California, for example, it's in B minor. All you need to know is that key, and then you find your B, which is a seventh fret, and then the chords can be dictated. On a dark desert highway five, I'm going in my hair seven. I'm smell of colitas four, rising up through the air six. Up ahead in the distance three, star shimmering light. Four, na, 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 na. five, six. Welcome to the Hotel California. Three. And of course, if you're singing, it's going to be hard to dictate chords. But that's another thing. Of course, is if you are given a chord, it's assumed that that chord will begin at the next bar line if it's in four-four time. If there are two chords in a bar, you might be given two numbers. It means by default they're going to be equal. It could be. The thing is, if the if it gets too complex, you've got to start having music in front of you, or you know, listen to the tune on YouTube, you know, with your phone, just to try and get the gist of it. I mean, you can't do. You can't dictate that in numbers really easily. One, four, five, seven, two. <laughs> nine it's it's just uh, it becomes a bit of an issue there's your major and minor chords now with guitar we have a similar similar thing here but this time we've got to make sure that we know what our chords are now some of them are major and some of them are minor so if we begin with your major keys again so there's G. Chord two is going to be a minor chord most of the time. Thing is, the second chord was actually major there. 
the rules are there to be broken and there's not always going to follow this. But most stuff does this. Chord one is major. Chord two is minor. Chord three is minor. Chord four is major. Chord five is major. And chord six is minor. Notice the pattern on the guitar. You've got a step each time with the two different main chord shapes. You've got E shapes and then A shapes. That means that if the bass player knows the tune and can call out the chords of the keyboard, the guitarist has got a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. Of course, there are exceptions. Might, you know, somebody, uh, if we're, I don't know, um, he ain't heavy, he's my brother, Holly's. And I'm strong, strong enough to carry flat six. So it may be that you get a chord of a flattened sixth, but flat six or six lowered, flat six is better. Flattened sixth or flat six, it just, it, they are words that can be easily understood. In a minor key, it's a similar thing. So you've got minor, minor, major, minor, major or minor, major. And you do get a chord seven as well. Chord seven is more, far more common in minor chords. And that's F, so. But the pattern can be recognized as repeating itself again. We've got three, five, and six, three, five, and six, and then an eight. This is in the key of G minor. So G minor. Six. It's all about where things are in relation to that number one. Now, similar to the bass, I could put chord seven just below it because one and eight are the same. We've got to make sure we get that. One and eight are the same. So. Seven, five, there are three, five, one, seven, Three, five. Now in a minor key, you do have quite a few more options than you would do with a major key with your chords. In that chords four and five in a minor key could be major or minor. That's to do with the different types of minor scale that are in common use. We've got the natural minor. We've got the harmonic minor. And we've got the melodic minor. and then the melodic minor coming down is the same as your natural minor. So we've got, we're dealing with three different things. That's why some of the notes can be played differently. So. So in that, minor progression in G minor, I actually used both major chords and minor ones. So this is gonna be, you know, four minor, four major. Major and minor, they sound the same on stage too. However, it's just, you know, you, we can't get round everything with this method, but it's a really good method if you just wanna get, if you know what the key is and you can predict what chords might come next.